Okay, well, first of all, it's great credit to the RTE investigates for their work. I was dreading the programme because I knew what the programme was going to show. And the reason I knew is because practically everything in that programme has been brought up by me and other deputies here, not just once, but continually over the years. So I really feel like standing up and saying today, well, look, we told you so. Recently, our amendments to ban the export of greyhounds to countries like China and Pakistan with no animal welfare were defeated. My arguments, our arguments were based on evidence and on facts. And I go back to a 2016 letter that was written to the Minister and um, that was also included to our board Nagan as they were there and to the Chinese ambassador with information from the three main welfare groups in Ireland and from international welfare groups that any greyhounds that were going from here to the likes of the Macau, they were going to certain death, not to mention the cruelty and the abuse beforehand. I'd also reference at my time at the committee and in here the numbers of greyhounds, Irish greyhounds, who are on stud books and on breeding establishment books in China. And I mentioned the fact that rescue groups who take our, our greyhounds back from those countries, they don't want them to come back to Ireland, such as the, the possibility you. of abuse here. And it was the IGB who looked for okay. the export permissions back in 2011. This is not a minority group we're talking Deputy about. Collins. It's actually the majority of greyhound owners who are abusive to their animals. Deputy Collins, one minute. Also, I'd like to thank the RTE, RTE Investigates programme on uh, exposing what, as Deputy of Sullivan has said, we already knew. There's a culture of animal cruelty that has not been addressed in this country, and current legislation and regulation is found to be wanting. And apart from the reputational damage caused by the latest scandal involving the greyhound racing industry, there's a serious welfare issue that needs to be addressed urgently. Ministers pay only lip service to the issue and are not joining the dots in terms of the links between cruelty, illegal activities and the way in which dogs have been bred in Ireland. <clears throat> and it's no wonder they're not, they're not joining the dots when the area of animal welfare is currently divided into four different departments. And the legislation we do have relies heavily on self-regulation rather than robust enforcement of animal welfare laws. Minister, I want to hear something from you today that's going to actually change things. I'm hoping that this is the last nail in the coffin for the, uh, for the greyhound industry. The cruelty to these dogs, the way they've been treated, exported, and um, the hares are, are, are where they're treated in the industry. We have to have serious look at investigating these organisations on the basis of that programme, and I want to hear you saying it now, um, and that if, they, uh, if necessary, we would draw the funding um, to these organisations pending um, the, that uh, things change. But we should be stopping greyhounds racing is gone only 50 percent I think please. since 2007 only 50 percent of Collins, people please. turn up Deputy for the Deputy Greyhound uh, stadiums Deputy. every year the minister comes into the doll and when we raise uh, objections to public funding to the tune of 16 million a year going to this greyhound industry the minister has responded saying what an important role it plays in our social and cultural and sporting uh, landscape um, we have been consistently a small number of tds in this stall raising the issues that are raised in the rt uh, prime time uh, investigates raising the question of uh, the killing of up to 6,000 greyhounds a year in this country because they're not fast enough, raising the question of the exports to countries like Macau, whereby the protections uh, are almost uh, non-existent. You have horrific situations like the boiling of greyhounds alive when they're no longer uh, useful, raising the question of the drugging, uh, which is quite uh, widespread, uh, raising the question of, of the mutilation, uh, raising the question of uh, cruelty. Um, now, across the country, there are significant protests uh, taking place because people are appalled at what they see. Uh, there has to be action by the government now. We can't hear more words defending this industry, which is based on uh, profit and exploitation. Uh, we need an end to public funding of uh, the greyhound industry, and Thank we need you, action. Okay. Minister. Four minutes to reply. Thank you, Cahir. Look, um, um, as Minister for State at the Department of Agriculture, Food and Marine, with responsibility for the greyhound sector, I've already expressed my deep concern at the issues highlighted in the RTE investigation of the 26th of June. I want to once again reassure the House that the Department takes any allegations of breaches of animal welfare rules very, very seriously and will thoroughly investigate and take the necessary enforcement actions to deal with such offences. You will be aware that the new Greyhound Racing Act uh, 2019, which was passed through both Houses of the Oireachtas with your assistance, and input so recently was signed into law last month. 
I'm confident that the new Act will improve the governance of Port Nagan, strengthen the regulatory controls in the industry, modernise sanctions and improve integrity within the sector. Under the Act, Port Nagan may make regulations to require the registration of greyhound owners, the registration of racing greyhounds and the notification by owners, breeders and trainers of greyhounds of many more life events than are currently captured on existing studbook and microchipping databases. These regulations will support the Board in its ambition to establish and maintain a new comprehensive tracing database for racing greyhounds and provides greater powers to deal with areas such as anti-doping, integrity and sanctions, the need for which has only been further underlined by what we saw recently. In it, it is deeply frustrating that these breaches of animal welfare that were highlighted by RTE have come to light in the year that saw the largest ever allocation of funding to animal welfare organisations of just over two and three quarter million euros. A total of 108 organisations are benefiting under these arrangements and I appreciate the valuable work um, these organisations do to protect the welfare of animals on a daily basis. An animal welfare low-call helpline is in place along with a dedicated email address which facilitates the reporting by members of, of the public of any uh, suspicion of animal cruelty taking place. All calls are received are treated with confidence and are followed up by the authorised officers within the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine. So I would urge anyone who has witnessed the breach of animal welfare rules to use this facility. I just want to take this opportunity to highlight some of what has been achieved from, for animal welfare by this government. The government has demonstrated a strong, consistent record regarding the enforcement of animal welfare rules, including the review of 100 years of animal welfare legislation leading to the enactment of the Animal Health and Welfare Act of 2013. Since then, a total of 73 successful prosecutions have been taken under the Act, with a further 30 uh, currently being processed for welfare uh, abuses. The use of wild animals in circuses was banned in 2017 and this week the government has taken the decision in principle to ban fur farming over a phased period. Minister Queed will bring forward a general scheme of a bill to the government without delay to for the provide for this ban. I should stress that the department does not issue certificates for the export of greyhounds to China or Pakistan and no certificates have been issued for the export of greyhounds from Ireland to either of those destinations since I was appointed as Minister. I can also confirm that the department is engaging in a review of the licensing conditions of knackeries with regard to the practices seen on RTE. All allegations will be examined to determine whether the appropriate act actions needed. Similarly, I understand that the coursing activity on Whitty Island will be investigated by the NPWS and this matter will be pursued by the relevant authorities. And I fully understand and empathise with the views and concerns of members of the public and their response to the contents of this programme, which undermined our deeply felt national attachment to the care and welfare of all animals. In recent days, <clears throat> Board Nagan has published its first steps of their action plan to strengthen the traceability, rehoming and welfare standards by improved regulation, more inspections and the use of greater resources in these areas. I will be vis visiting one minute, one second. I will be visiting the headquarters of Board Nagan shortly to meet with the chair of the board members to discuss the welfare standards of the industry. And in addition, I will discuss the swift implementation of their action, action plan with a view to the, identifying what further tangible measures are required to address the serious public concern raised in this programme. Mr. Thank Minister, you. I wanted to point out there is a time slot and it is up to the Chair to tell you when that time is up. As every, I know it's important but the other people had to share far less time so I want to be fair to everybody. Now you have a minute each starting with Deputy O'Sullivan. Okay. First question is why did you, the Minister, why did the IGB, why did the Department have to wait for the programme because we were telling you all this already. I also mentioned that Italy and France have banned the export of their dogs to countries like China, the US and Australia also. Commercial airlines won't take greyhounds if they know that's where they're going. And if I just go back to the coursing, my bill to uh, ban and live hair coursing, coursing was defeated. But it was based on the evidence that we had in the programme the other night of what's going on. Now we have appalling injuries to the hairs as well. And one of the answers
Ministers was, well look, it's better to have the, the coursing licence, but we all knew that there was unlicensed stuff going on. And if you noted at the programme minister as well, the number of people from the licensed coursing clubs who were attending those meetings. Now, there was a big hoo-ha about the FAI and about REPAC and their government funding. Why is the same not being applied to the IGB, the amount of funding that get, they're getting? Why is it not we withheld until we see these particular issues? You know, we're treating because it's animals or whatever. Thank the you. IGB were aware that injured dogs were being forced to run in races and that they were being given morphine so that they could run. It's an absolute disgrace, this yeah, industry. I think I'm, I'm actually appalled by the Minister's response. There's no urgency in what you're saying here. Um, as has been said, we know this has been taking place. You know it's been taking place. Your Minister behind you knows this has been taking place for a number of years um, in relation to the greyhound industry and how the treatment of uh, uh, hairs in the hair coursing. Minister, steps have to be taken very, very clinically and quickly to show the industry that this practice will not be tolerated not be tolerated at all. You're talking about 6,000 greyhounds been brought to, many of them been brought to knackeries and beaten to death um, from, uh, to, to kill them because they can't run fast enough. This is not a livestock. These are animals that should be treated with the respect um, uh, that they, 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 sh they should be uh, taken as. So I'm asking you, Minister, to immediately say to the um, Irish greyhound industry, your funding will be stopped if these aren't um, dealt with, that we should have issued passports for greyhounds that are only going to countries that have welfare conditions as high as a standard as ours, and they should be double-checked on that, and that the, the hair course netting licence should be stopped until the, immediately until there's an investigation into that. And these sort of things will have much. an impact, Minister. Not the weasley words I've heard from you Final day comment, to day. It's just not good enough. Not good enough. Yeah, it's, 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 I agree, it's not good enough. Um, it's just the idea that the Minister comes in and expresses his deep concern at the issues highlighted. The issues have been highlighted for years and years and years, and it should not take an RTE expose to make people outside be aware of it, and then all of a sudden the government is concerned. I have a letter here sent in 2016 that outlines precisely the issues that have been raised. Uh, repeatedly, the ISPCA, Dogs Trust Ireland, Irish Blue Cross, Ban Blood Sports Ireland have raised the these issues precisely. In this stall, these issues have been raised repeatedly. So the idea that you don't know about it until it's on RTE is simply not credible. In relation to your answer that um, does, does, the department does not issue certificates for the export of greyhounds to China or Pakistan, yeah, but you know that they're exported to the UK and then from the UK that they're exported. And you know that the people, you know precisely who is involved or your department knows precisely who is involved in doing that. There's particular people going around and buying up greyhounds for export precisely you, to those countries. I'd also mention uh, the knackeries, John Stiles and his daughter's knackery featured in the programme. I know Thank he admitted you. recently, he said he, he wouldn't shoot any more dogs, therefore an admission Thank that he has uh, already done so. The funding should be cut. Thank you. Two minutes. Thank you, Chairman. I appreciate the um, member's contribution. Deputy O'Sullivan, in fairness, you participated in the Greyhound Racing Act, and I think the record will check that you commended me for my ongoing efforts to bring that legislation. Since I was appointed Minister, three years almost to the day, I set about bringing, modernising the regulation around greyhounds. Sorry, I didn't interrupt you. Okay. My, I am sincerely trying to bring this uh, industry into, into focus and in, into shape. I will be meeting the chair and board members this week to go through their action plan to see the immediate Im implementation of it. And yes, Italy have banned it. We can ban it, but unless every country that we export to that has actually good welfare standards adopt the same approach, we cannot. Um, on our own control what happens in the UK. We can certainly work with them and re-emphasise on them the need for them to have stricter controls on how animals exit their country. Like, if every country puts a ring around the community, whether it's the 27 or 28 in the European Union plus the UK, if everybody has the same ring of steel around their exports, then no dogs will end up in those countries. But we can't do it unilaterally, we need cooperation. And that's why we need to engage with the International Greyhound Forum to make sure that that becomes a reality. 